we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society, opposed to secret oaths, opposed to secret proceedings, secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to know. To know. And deserve to know. going on everyone welcome to conspiracy corner podcast um i hope you guys have enjoyed the recent uploads um i know we've been going a little bit off track as far as like you know food review stuff um honestly the blue pill podcast but uh just stuff that that Blue Pill podcast I put out months ago, probably like two months ago, and I don't know, it's just been sitting here on my computer, and I'm like, I didn't want to put it out under Conspiracy Corner Podcast, because it has nothing to do with conspiracies and stuff, um, but it's just, once in a while, you might see one of those, and it's, um, it doesn't go to Spotify, it doesn't go to our sponsor, it's just, um, our version of a Patreon special, um, something you guys can listen to when when you don't feel like getting into a conspiracy theory, when you don't feel like, I guess, thinking so much, you know, when you just kind of need a break from conspiracy theories, you can listen to it. I don't know if there's going to be anything else on there. I don't know if there's anything else planned. It's just... One of those things is just spur of the moment. Um, I had some energy, had some time, and I needed to put something out. So, but today we are doing um, Conspiracy Corner Podcast. So, I got some stuff that I want to get into. I want to get into um, pretty much ancient astronaut theory today. Um, I have a little segment from the new UFO sightings from Glenn McWayne and David Graham. Um, I don't know, I just want to read a little bit uh, and get into some ancient astronaut theory. Because at the end of the day, I'm an ancient astronaut theorist and I have been for a while. And um, I know it's been glorified by like Sci-Fi Channel with the whole ancient aliens TV show and stuff, and I have nothing against that, you know, but, uh, I don't know, I I like to get deep into the origins of it, you know, uh, and it's just, I could talk about it all day, how we have been visited by the old gods, aka the aliens, you know, um, but we're gonna get into it, uh, This segment is Chapter 4, Prehistoric Visitors from the New UFO Sightings. Eric Von Donneken rose to fame and fortune with his bestseller, Chariots of the Gods. But as he has admitted, he was by no means presenting original theories, for others before him had advanced similar ideas. Ideas that seemed to ring the bell of logic with many of us who had spent considerable time trying to evaluate the purpose behind the mysteries from the sky. One such pioneer of the theory of prehistoric extraterrestrials involved with early man was Brinsley Le Pure Trench, who revealed his thinking in the 1960 book 
the sky people. Um, I don't know. I'm going to look that one up because I've always heard that like the origin of ancient astronaut theory honestly goes way back to, uh, dang it, HP Lovecraft. Um, as far as like the old ones, the ancient gods who came here in prehistoric times during like, they were almost like crustaceans, you know, during a uh, Jurassic period, you know. Um, they were like the first visitors, and then I've I also have uh, I think it's the UFOs have landed from Lesman Desley. Uh, basically, it gets into like the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedas and stuff like that, the ancient Hindu text, which are. Honestly, like they talk about the Vimana and stuff, which is like ancient UFO and stuff. It gets deep, man. Trench advanced the hypothesis that Ad Adamic creature creation took place. Sorry. Trench advanced the hypothesis that Adamic creation took place long after God created galactic man and that Adam and Eve were latecomers on the scene. Alihom. Elohim in Genesis 1.26 says, Let us make man after our image. Em emphasis added. This gets into, honestly, if you want to check out my deep Bible reading stuff, it's under a section which is just the Bible. Um, it gets into this, how the ancient Hebrew of the actual Bible literally says Elohim, which is our like the gods not um, we were created in his image that we were created in their image you know this we're gonna get deep let's see let us make man after our image emphasis added did this indicate that the Elohim was in reality a combined cosmic creator or a group of gods from realms beyond earth or even from other dimensions of time and space was elohim then a cosmic hierarchy with jehovah designated as the tribal god of the ancient hebrews is it further possible that in the dim past of adamic creation jehovah might have been a select group of rulers a.k.a. the Anunnaki, all under the direction of a divine mind, a.k.a., you know, the creator of all, the big G, if you're, you know, looking at it from that perspective, that he existed before the beginning and always will be. Trench postulates that there were many gods and godlike beings long before Adam and Eve with their earth animal chemical bodies made their appearance in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had no instructions to replenish the earth with others of their kind until after Eve was tempted, taught by the serpent, and learned a few tricks of propagation and diet. Trench continues his hypothesis by stating that the galactic race was known as the serpent people, reptilians. From the beginning, and that Genesis story of Eve and the forbidden fruit was actually an accounting of the time when galactic man visited Eden and found earth women to their liking. Genesis 6-4 states that the sons of God, galactic man, saw that the daughters of men, chemical man, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all they chose. Jehovah became enraged and banished galactic man from the garden for having introduced sex and diets designed to prolong life and to enhance the sexual desires and abilities of ancient men and women, Adam and Eve, of the garden. The women collected the various forbidden fruits and introduced them to the men, changing the whole plan of Jehovah, whom limited his subjects 
to the realms of human robot gardeners, similar to the worker ants who have no sex role. Jehovah's plan of celibacy was undermined by his celestial travelers. The serpent symbol is the waveform of energy, a sperm symbol representing life. The symbol of the serpent kings who are recorded by ancient cultures around the world to have come from the sky to establish on earth the beneficent rule of sons of the sun or sons of heaven. Trench sees the mingling of the two types of people as original meaning of the cross. The original meaning of the cross the further theorizes that the Garden of Eden was not on earth and that the great flood actually took place on the then inhabited planet Mars with Noah's Ark being a giant spaceship. Ha <laughs> ha, that's crazy. We're getting deep. I don't know, he takes a lot of what I believe in and, and like I said, this isn't like fact or nothing, this is not what I believe in, but he takes what I believe in and he kind of puts a little bit of a twist on it, you know. Um, if anything, at the end of the day, I find it interesting, you know. Um, I find it need to take note of, you know. And these are rare books that you can't find anymore. Uh, this one that I hold in my hand right now is literally falling apart, you know. The children of the unions between the galactic men and the chemical women of Earth were the giants in the Earth who established their kingdoms in Atlantis. This gets into Atlantean theory, you know, that there was an Atlantis. Um, I believe in Atlantis. I have multiple videos on Atlantis and um, Bermuda Triangle. I grew up in Florida, man. I grew up on the Gulf side of Florida and we we grew up as Floridians we grew up with those those stories of the Bermuda Triangle and it's Atlantis and especially during the 90s and stuff and I don't know I there's something to it there's something there the uh, platonic theory because it's written by Plato is that in the Bermuda Triangle, the mountaintops of the Azores is where Atlantis is. But I, me personally, I believe that there was multiple Atlantises around the Earth um, before the Flood that were just like safe havens for people to go and travel and swap languages, swap knowledge, swap stories. I think that's why there's so many stories all over the face of the earth that are the same stories of ancient mythology. Um, we are all screaming at the rooftops in ancient carnations. The same stories everywhere on this on this globe or flat plane, whatever you believe, you know. Um, just swapping ideas, cultures, food, language, text. Uh, until the flood, you know. Let's see. The children of the unions between the galactic men and the chemical women of Earth were the giants in the Earth. That's the Nephilim, you know. The old race uh, of giants, basically. Who established their kingdoms in Atlantis, which forested great empires and flourished until its in an undulation thousands of years later. Generations of Atlanteans migrated to distant lands, including Egypt and the Americas, giving rise to the idea that we are all in the final analysis related to the galactic men of those bygone eras. Today, UFOs could be the spaceships of the Elohim, keeping watch over us, watch over the results of, Earth, of early crossbreeding. The gods from outer space protected the sons and the daughters of heaven from self-destruction. Such a motive could account for the heavy UFO flaps that have been reported since shortly after the first atomic bomb reared its ugly mushroom head and ended in World War II. I believe that. 
I mean, that's when Roswell and all that stuff happened, you know. In his book, Atlantis Rising, written in 1970, but not released until September 1973, Steger advanced his theory that civilization on this planet has been cyclical. Cyclical. C Y C L I C A L. Cyclical. Theory that civilization on this planet has been cyclical. <clears throat> that intelligent, tool using man is millions of years older than orthodoxy is prepared to concede. And that a great catastrophe or several catastrophes may have estimated, may have eliminated much of the physical evidence that would clearly establish advanced prehistoric civilizations, which makes sense. I kind of agree with that, man, that we have been through multiple apocalypses. The Great Flood is one, the meteor of the um, dragons, aka dinosaurs, is one. I think, you know, that the Egyptians moved into Egypt and that stuff was already there. Um, if the apocalypse happened right now, and it was kind of like, I am legend, and I'm like one of the few people who are here, and I get a chance to lie to the next generation, I ain't gonna lie. There's a part of me that would be tempted to go, I built all this. I am God here. I am a demigod. You know, <laughs> can you say that you wouldn't do that? I mean, I don't think at the end of the day I would. I think I, I would eventually confess, but I don't know if I would want to carry on the history of, of the past. But I mean, at the same time, I would and tell the truth of everything that I know, you know. At the end of the day, I would carry on that. Maybe that vanilla flavor, that generic, you know, um, that AA version of the creator of all. That's the way I look at it. The, the, the first religion on the face of this planet, whether it be flat or round, was literally the creator of all, is what the Sumerians believed. The creator of all. They kept it simple. Who created this, Dad? Creator of all. What's his name? The creator of all. The big G. I think that's what a lot of, honestly, Freemasonry believes, is that there might have been these lesser gods, these smaller gods, but you have lowercase g, and then you have the big G, you know? And I don't think it's Jehovah. My personal opinion is that Jehovah is an interdimensional parasite. Um, he's a madman. And some people say that Jehovah is... Inky and Enlil, and I'm not going to get into that eagle versus serpent war. Um, I think that Enlil is Lucifer, a.k.a. Prometheus, a.k.a. Um, the serpent. And I think that Inky is, is, I don't know, I don't even, I don't know, it gets crazy, dude. Jehovah and Satan, like, I, I don't know, that's a big yin-yang theory right there. I don't know, I think there's a lot of gray, man. Everyone looks at things as yin and yang, that there's white and black, you know, and you could look at it as from an, an occult point of view of Freemasonry, that there's white and black checkerboards, but where are the, where are the gray squares? Where, where are, where's the gray in, in the yin-yang symbol, you know? Um... I just don't believe that things are white and black. I believe there's a lot of politics to it. But at the end of the day, I believe that Jehovah is an interdimensional parasite. Kind of like Rick and Morty. You know, something that, in my opinion, flies through space that represents all chaos and madness and destruction and... Um, it just kind of floats through the, the abyss of space and time and just plants itself on a planet and gets in, gets inside of our brains and bodies physically and mentally and spiritually and just 
and drains and drains, and that it could be this old man Saturn, you know, with the reaping sickle that sweeps up the children and gnaws at their flesh. I don't know. Something crazy and cynical that can make a man grab a shield and a sword and go on crusades, or a priest to hide with his robes in darkened corners, creeping on children, you know. Evil, cynical darkness that can be freed only by light, that can be cleansed and banished only by light. Not freed, but banished by light. You know, illuminated. The light within the darkness that shines all the way to the corners of that deep, dark, cavernous hole that is within you, within me, within everyone in the back of their mind, that black hole, and there's a shining light, a woman or a man or a hermit holding a, a candle, a lantern, to shine the light on that parasite and rip it from the grips of our minds, our souls, and to be illuminated and to fly out of the darkness into the light, into the sun, into that beautiful, beautiful sun that is up there, man. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that was beautiful and poetic, you know. Let's see. In Atlantis Rising, Steger points out that during the 1952-1953 Thirstland expedition, to southern and central Africa, explorer leader John Brown sent back an account of a remarkable specimen of a cave art found at the Mountains of Fire. According to Brown, the mountain paintings located in a dark cave were quite unlike any of the usual Bushman work. The central figure was a white woman, pretty young and graceful, with her hair bobbed in the style of an ancient Egypt. She wore a beaded headdress, a garment resembling a modern jersey blouse, shorts, gloves, girdle, and shoes similar to those worn in modern Mediterranean countries. In 1938, while digging in a hill near Baghdad, German, arch, uh, near Baghdad, German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig turned up an object that resembled a modern dry cell battery. This gets deep, dude. And this has been out since the 90s, man. Like, the whole Baghdad, bag, Baghdad battery theory um, has been out since the 90s. So I don't know. I'm an old school, you know, conspiracy theorist, man. I remember my dad telling me he was big into the whole UFO thing, dude. Watching E.T., a.k.a. E.B., um... I remember hearing bits and pieces of, you know, Coast to Coast AM and watching the alien autopsy videos on VHS. You know, my dad was a conspiracy theorist, you know. But this is the main point of this, the Baghdad battery. In 1938, while digging in a hill near Baghdad, German archaeologist William Koenig turned up an object that resembled a modern-day dry cell battery. A bit later, he, turned that, he, turn, he learned that four similar objects were found a few miles downriver. Were these indeed artifacts left by men of a lost civilization? Perhaps even a civilization from a planet beyond our tiny ball of mud? Steger goes on to relate that Koenig found, in a museum in Berlin, ten additional batteries that had broken down into their component parts. Later, William F. M. Gray, on General Electric High Voltage Laboratory in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, built an exact duplicate of the ancient battery. Using the dimensions and the metallurgical analysis supplied by the German scientist author Willie Ley. Gray used copper sulfate as an electrolyte, and the battery worked perfectly. Jumping forward a bit, 
on the linear timetable. Well, and to record a history, let's review a UFO landing that took place just before the turn of this century. <coughs> the date is April 17, 1897. We are joining the throngs in the excitement that has taken place in the dusty western community of Aurora, Texas. The time is roughly 6 o'clock on this spring morning and several of the early risers have noticed some sort of weird spacecraft sailing through the air. It flies directly over the public square and as it reaches the northern part of Aurora it crashes into the tower on Judge Proctor's windmill. The UFO we discovered is piloted by a lone UF UFOnaut, and while his features are pretty well mangled from the crash, it is evident that he is not an inhabitant of this planet. It is now the next day, and the remains of, his, of the pilot are buried, and all that remains are the funeral, are some papers with strange writing on them. The characters are in the form of hieroglyphics that cannot be deciphered by anyone present. Could it be that the logbook of the stranger's travels? Yes, sir. This morning in Aurora, Texas, there was certainly a stranger. Today we are still wondering about the spaceman. Opinions vary, of course. But one theory advanced by the on-the-scene spectator, T.J. Weems, a UF, U.S. signal officer and authority of astronomy, was that the pilot was from Mars. Whether or not the 77-year-old seven, assumption is correct is a matter of conjecture, for evidence seems to point to Mars as a deserted planet that has not had life on it for thousands of years, if ever, at least not intelligent life resembling Homo sapiens. See, I kind of agree with that. Um... My theory on Mars. Here we go. This is getting into the raw, you know. My theory on Mars, without spoiling further episodes of Conspiracy Corner Podcast. Um, I don't care to share it. I'll share it. I'll share it. Because if, if we do an episode on it, that's fine. Um... I am definitely a pupil of Zachariah Sitchin. And Zachariah Sitchin gets a lot of hate because hold out your right hand and I guarantee, unless you're a Nephilim, unless you're, you know, a member of that bloodline, which um, I'm not judging because I've been doing some research and I'm a bloodline of Agag, you know. Go look that shit up. That gets deep. Uh, check out Larry Gators' work, you know. I'm a bloodline of Agag. Reverse it, hold it in a mirror. Write Agag on a mirror and then hold it and reverse it. Gaga, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to do the homework for you. As above, so below, you know. It's all mirror stuff. Um... What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pupil of Sitchin, though. And a lot of people, you know, in the truth community, have went, oh, Sitchin's a Freemason. There was that leaked video of him being a Freemason. Well, look, I'm not a Freemason. Um, I do remember a time when my grandpa took me into his church at closing time when there was no one there. Um, me, my grandpa Williams, and my brother, my little brother, um, and we got knighted, and we got presented with swords, um, it was definitely a ritualistic ceremony that went on, um, I don't know, I mean, pretty much from what I've gathered, I, I believe that it was like an ancient knighting ceremony of the Knights Templar, you know, and it was a beautiful experience, you know, it, it meant a lot to us that we were knighted, and that it, 
he pretty much knighted us and, and blessed us with holy oil and was just like, go on my sons and preach the word, you know, destroy this serpent, cut off its head, you know. Um, and a lot of people say that Freemasonry started from Knights Templar. And I can't speak any ill of Knights Templar. I cannot say because Freemasons do not apparently know their origin when you actually go up to them and be like, hey man, what's your origin? Is it Knights Templar? They act all dumb and stupid on you. And honestly, I mean, I like to fuck with Freemasons <laughs> because they can't, they, they are like literally, I watched a documentary the other day. They are literally struggling on men membership. And I, I would like to join, honestly, just out of curiosity. And because they promote it as th this is a conspiracy, like, um, not, not even a conspiracy, but this is like a group that makes men better. So, like, me looking in the mirror and being a friend of Bill, already a part of a fight club, you know, AA, a friend of Bill, I'm always trying to make myself better. I'm always trying to make myself better because we have service, service on that right side of that pyramid, that occultic symbol, you know, we have step programs. I'm made for Freemasonry, dude. And the service part is that like, we're always trying to make ourselves better. We are always trying to feel better, to make ourselves better, to to become a better person spiritually, physically, mentally, man. I want to be a better person, dude. So, like, I've literally kind of like, almost like begged Freemasons, let me in, dude. I will rock this shit. And, like, the thing is, to me, it's like modern day Boy Scouts. Like, oh, you earn badges and merits and steps and steps and steps and I'm I keep emphasizing that words. That's all it is. Steps are badges and merits. And come on, man. We are the Mustangs at Northwest Elementary. We are the very best. You know, I'm all for that shit, dude. I love badges and shit. Let me let me get something that I can frame on my wall, dude. But with Sitchin, a lot of people say, and this is why I had you hold out your hand earlier. Is your hand still held out? You there? You there? Hello, McFly. You there? All right. If you don't have six fingers, then you're, that means you're not a Nephilim. It's all okay. It's all okay. And I wouldn't judge you if you were a Nephilim because you cannot control who your parents had sex with. If you have two rows of teeth, I would still give you a hug. Because I still love you. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Alright. Zachariah Sitchin is what I'm a pupil of. And there's been some video leaked of him at a Freemason meeting. Guess what? Jordan Maxwell is a Freemason, too, but he's an honorary Freemason. Dude, I was given a knighting ceremony with my brother, Lucas, um, who has disappeared from the scene, you know. I've tried to get him on here. He's a local rapper in Kentucky, you know. He's white chocolate, <laughs> a white rapper. <laughs> I've tried to get him on here and just play, like, a little bit of his tunes and do an interview with him. I think it would be a fun podcast, you know. That, and he needs a woman. So, hey man, whoever's out there who's single, uh, I don't know. He, he's, uh, he's, he's more blessed than me downstairs. <laughs> I'm trying to do a shout out for him. <laughs> Lucas, come on here, man. I'm trying to get you hooked up with a woman, dude. 
I got all sorts of subs who are on here who are who are women who are thirsty, dude. Um, but anyways, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't report this video, please. Oh my God, please. But uh, I wanted you to hold out your hand and count. You have a thumb and four fingers. You can count one, two, three, four, five. There are five cuneiform tablet translators on the face of the globe at any time. That is how rare of people who can translate cuneiform tablets. And to me, that kind of hit home because I'm a big subscriber on Zachariah Sitchin. And he's a dead man. And just because he's a dead man doesn't mean he's right or wrong. It just, to me, that was pretty much the statistics on how many people know how to translate cuneiform. Cuneiform, which is the earliest language, the earliest chicken scratch, honestly, is what it looks like, chicken scratch, um, of writing, of, of man, is cuneiform. And to me, if you can hold out your hand and count five fingers, you know, and that's how many cuneiform translators walk amongst us. That's insane to me. That that is that is to me like the math. And maybe it's just hope, but five people compared to the entire population of the globe or flat plane, whatever you believe, man. That's it. That's all who know cuneiform translation tablets who can literally look at it and read it and Zachariah Sitchin was amongst them whether he a be a Freemason or not you know I mean I've known Freemasons who are fucking awesome people and I've known Freemasons who are dickheads no offense who are dickheads who literally made me stick my finger up my middle finger up to him and go, I still have it. You haven't cut it off yet. I could still shoot an arrow at you, motherfucker. Fuck you. I know history. I'm not some ignorant, dumb fucking moron. I know what's going on, dude. And fuck you. You're an asshole. But then I have met Freemasons who are fucking awesome, who are amazing. And I mean, I look at it this way. Like, I'm a member of... AA, you know, like, uh, I've met people in AA who are awesome people and I've met people in AA who make me not want to go back to a meeting and it's a secret society, dude. Bill, Bill was in Freemasonry. Bill was in MK ultra LSD. A lot of people don't know that it's not a 12 step program. It's a 13 step program program steps steps kind of like freemasonry steps you know we're gonna do an episode on that man how aa is a cult it's an occult mystery school it is an occult secret society all right i'm tired of defending zachariah sitchin man where were we at? I think that's it as far as ancient astronaut theory, honestly. Yeah. That is all she wrote on ancient astronaut theory. Well, no, there's a little more. There's a little more. You guys aren't ready to go home just yet, right? No? I'm talking to myself? All right. According to ancient Incan legends... Tiohanaku was built by a race of giants whose fatherland had been destroyed by a great deluge that had lasted two months. These powerful survivors transported remnants of their culture to Tiohanaku on the shores of Lake Titicaca in Bolivia's high plateau. If Egypt was the principal colony of Atlantis in the Old World, when Tiahuanaku might well have been one of the sunken continent's attempts at rebirth 
in the new world. The new world. Um, we're going to do a whole episode on Atlantis and stuff. We got so much planned. We are so behind. I'm getting there. And, and we go deep, man. We go deep. So, I hope you all are listening, and I hope you all are enjoying, you know. Because there is so much secret knowledge that we have been lied to. Um, this is just from America. I want to say something, too, by the way. America is the new Atlantis. And this is from Freemason Secrets. And you can look up online and stuff. Um, most of the presidents are Freemasons, man. Most of the presidents are Freemasons. Pretty much all of them, for the most part. Unless you catch a bullet like JFK and or Abe Lincoln. And I emphasize this a lot because there's a secret club that at the highest order at the highest top of the pyramid that's going on that are controlling everything a puppeteer you know um, controlling the strings that control this little Pinocchio body of these presidents these puppets puppets really um, and if you say too much you end up like Abraham Lincoln oh my god this is getting produced by by a channel named Abe Williams. Oh my fucking god, my name's Abraham. Oh my god, I'm gonna catch a bullet. <laughs> Maybe I could catch a bullet for putting this out. Just know that I love you all. Just know that I love you all. And if I say too much, and I might, I don't know. They, they could destroy me in many other ways besides a bullet. I would prefer a bullet because I would like to go to sleep in existence that is black and long and, and final. I don't want to be reincarnated. I don't want... That's not dead noise. Do you hear that? Nothing? That would be my existence for an afterlife that I would enjoy. Um, I don't know. I hope I'm not saying too much. But if I do say too much, just know that I've always loved you guys. You guys have been amazing to me. And by the way, this has not been about money because I've not made a cent off of any of this. If anything, i put more money in than I have made. I just want to get this knowledge out there. And I want to tell the people what's going on. But America is the new Atlantis. The, the new Atlantis. And somebody, uh, Bill Maher, man, Bill Maher, not Bill Mayhar, Bill Mayhar, Bill Maher, Bill Maher, I don't know, he's from Switzerland. Um, he kind of aggravated me. He put out some little rant, new rules, new rules, Bill Maher says, new rules, new rules, Bill Maher says, new rules, is his little thing, his little funny skit, because I guess he's a stand-up comedian. Which I've actually watched his comedy stand-up special. I mean, he gets me giggling on the whole anti-religion stuff. But at the end of the day, he's he he has to know why he's wearing that necklace with uh, the golden lion with its mane all frazzled and stuff. He has to know why he's doing all that jazz. Um, he lives in Babylon, though, too, you know? And it could be a mock Lion of Zion, you know. I used to be a Rastafari, Ja Rastafari, I and I, you know. Um, I'm not hating on the dude. I still like his stand-up comedy and stuff. But uh, he was saying that America was named after Amerigo, which was like a slave trader. 
false, false, Hiram key. Read the Hiram key. Um, I don't have it on hand. I'm recording from downstairs right now. My library is upstairs because I keep a library and I keep it upstairs with actual books that I can pull out. And, and dude, sometimes when I make a video just on one book, I'm literally pulling out like a stack of like 10 other books. I'm the motherfucking page master up in here, dude, because I am well read. I'm a motherfucking librarian without the motherfucking, you know, I sound like Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> without the, without the fucking, like, paperwork, dude, um, I'm page master, dude, I'm a librarian, man, and I like to co-acknowledge sources that are coming to me throughout other books, I can read a book cover to cover in a week, you know, this, this channel started out on book reviews. I am well fucking read, dude. I know what's going on, dude. And it's not on the internet. It's not on fucking, I know it's cool to keep up with what is going on outside your door. But remember at the end of the day that it's kind of like that Bill Hicks joke of <laughs> crickets, man. I'm hearing all this crazy stuff going on on TV. It is TV. It is a channel. It is a channel. Think about that word right there. Channel. You are watching a channel. I am channeling you right now. What am I? Media. A medium. I am a medium channeling into you right now with my voice. What is voice? Etymology. Spells. I am spelling words. I am spelling words. To you I'm casting a spell on you with my words I am a medium through a channel casting spells on you you notice that s do you notice that this is all almost like kind of like Harry Potter like parcel tongue that this is a very serpentine language that this is a very serpent thing going on I mean, we can go deep, dude. Or do you not want to go down this rabbit hole anymore? Because I'm willing to. You might be a madman when you come out. But I don't know, man. I think there's something to everything. Where was I at? Hiram Key. Hiram Key. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll end it there. I think I'll end it there and leave you guys on a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was saying, let me end this with this. Um, Hiram Key and all that. And Bill Moore was going around saying, like, fucking that America was named after this slave trader named America. It is not. It is named after a star that was in the sky when they, when Columbus who came in with his Knights Templar red cross on a white shield, which would be the banner, the mast of his ship. He was Knights Templar, and he was pretty much funded by Knights Templar, which was Freemasonry. And this, the guy who wrote this book is a Freemason, you know. Um, Hiram Key, check it out. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, America was named America because of this star in the sky named La Mercia, La Mercia, which was the star in the sky. And go down that rabbit hole yourself, unless... We are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society. Opposed to secret oaths. Opposed to secret proceedings. Secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes.
from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve deserve to, to know. know. Deserve to know.